Thank you for joining us once more. This is scene two of Spy Harmony. We pick up at the end of the last scene. Yes, sir. Made contact with the Australian. No, sir. He's busy tonight reviewing our intelligence on the mark. Yes, sir. Oh, 800 hours. Yes. Good night, sir. Agent Balboni hangs up the phone and looks at her tablet computer screen. She is looking at Agent Ferguson. A little while later, we see white car pull up in front of a hotel. This is the Portsmouth Towers Hotel. We see Agent Ferguson getting out of the car. He opens the trunk, grabs his bag, and hands his car key to an eager valet. Agent Ferguson now walks into the hotel lobby and heads for the front desk to check in. Welcome to Portsmouth Towers. Are you checking in? Yes. Ferguson. Barry Ferguson. Ferguson. Ah, yes. Can I see your passport, please, for identification purposes? Thank you. The front desk clerk looks at Agent Ferguson's passport as he stares and smiles. Thank you. Here is your passport and your keys. You are in room 2105. The small key is for your mini bar, sir. And the larger key is for the elevator. The plastic credit card sized key is your room key, of course. Enjoy your stay at Portsmouth Towers, sir. Thank you. Agent Ferguson takes his keys turns and heads for the elevator to go up to his room on the 21st floor of Portsmouth Towers, overlooking Portsmouth Harbour. Moments later, we see Agent Ferguson getting off the elevator and heading to his room. He enters his room, closes the curtains, then lies down on the bed. He places his gun on the night table next to him and goes to sleep. The next morning out front of Portsmouth Towers Hotel, Agent Balboni is waiting in her car, We see Agent Ferguson coming out of the hotel. He looks around, spots Balboni's car and heads towards it. I've been waiting since five to eight for you. You're late. Good morning to you too, sunshine. My apologies for my tardiness. What's our plan? We're going to the armory for our weapons and a briefing. I have a gun. Agent Balboni smiles, then laughs, pulls up her pleated dress and pulls out a long-barreled handgun from her knee-high boot. Oh, sweetie, that's not a gun. This is a gun. Well... I can't wait to see what else you've got tucked away under your dress. Agent Ferguson has a big grin on his face, but Balboni ignores him. They drive away in her car to CIA headquarters. Moments later, they pull into a parking lot at an office park. They leave the car and head to the entrance of the building. This is the CIA Special Weapons Center. Agents Balboni and Ferguson are in a large open area that has many guns stacked on racks. It's almost like a gun store, but inside the CIA building. Balboni. It's been a while. Heard you'd been assigned to monitor the Kilton Library Relay Server. Nice to see you again. Hi, sweetie. You have spies or something? You know way too much, and you know what that means. Oh, I know you wouldn't hurt me, darling. Who's this with you? This is Agent Barry Ferguson. He's from Australia. He's an agent of the Australian Secret Intelligence Service. G'day. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, and a g'day, mate, to you too. Sweetie, here's a list of the toys we'll be needing. Whoa, Nellie. Are you nation building? Okay, you're the boss. These will be ready in one hour. Thanks, sweetie. I'll be signing for all of it. Agent Ferguson, would you like some coffee? I'd love some. I'm as dry as a dead dingo's donger. Agent Balboni looks at Agent Ferguson with a blank face. Sweetie, I don't know what you just said. Do you want coffee or not? Yes, please. Milk, no sugar. Come with me. We're late for our briefing. Moments later... Agent Balboni and Agent Ferguson, coffee in hand, are head to a CIA meeting room for the briefing. As they enter the briefing room, they are greeted by senior CIA agent Damas. Come in. Sit down. Agent Kleinschwanz is about to discuss the Kilton relay server. Who's this with you, Francesca? I'm so sorry we're late, sir. This is Agent Barry Ferguson. He's from Australia. Ferguson, I'm Damas. Is there something funny? Ferguson? I thought you said your name is... Dumb ass. At this point, Senior Agent Damas looks at Agent Balboni with a questioning blank look. That's right, Damas. It's okay, sir. He's just Australian. Senior Agent Damas nods with approval. Agent Ferguson looks somewhat confused. Ah, I see. All right, Agent Kleinschwanz. What do you have for us? Firstly, I would like to thank everyone for attending this briefing. Welcome to our visitor from Australia. We had a request from our friends at the Australian Secret Intelligence Service to assist in tracking down U-235 thefts in Australia. As you are all aware, 
message encryption across the internet by our enemies, and hacking attempts on our vital interests, has become increasingly sophisticated. CIA was virtually unable to decrypt messaging on the dark web until the Library Freedom Project. In July 2015, CIA enabled the Kilton Public Library in Lebanon, New Hampshire, to become the first library in the United States to run a middle relay exit node hosting tour. Also, at that time, Agent Balboni joined the Kilton Library as assistant librarian. She is, of course, as we know, one of the world's leading modern cryptography experts. I'll now hand it over to Agent Balboni. Thank you, Agent Kleinschwanz. We've established an identity on the dark web as a virtual currency clearinghouse. Virtual currencies, especially Bitcoin, Ripple, Litecoin, and Doge, are the underworld's favorite payment methods. There are over a thousand virtual currencies. Establishing ourselves as a virtual currency clearinghouse has enabled us to add a GPS tracking key to each virtual currency transaction. This GPS tracking key provides CIA with a longitude and latitude that is accurate within one meter. CIA currently has 16 satellites for continuous GPS tracking. In other words, they can run, but they can't hide. Australian Secret Intelligence provided us with the Bitcoin wallet key of Robert Alexander, an Australian national living in a suburb of Sydney, Australia. He is suspected of acting as order taker for stolen yellow cake, U-235. CIA has confirmed this. CIA also tracked Bitcoin payments to Mr. Alexander. These Bitcoin payments came from a location on the outskirts of Boston, Massachusetts. The location was scouted by CIA over a period of several weeks, and we took some photos with our satellites. We identified the occupants, and specifically CIA identified the sender of the Bitcoin payments to Mr. Alexander as a U.S. citizen named Philip Kernan. A link to his bio, and yes, those are his social media accounts, is in your copy of this information file. Agent Balboni, what is Mr. Kernan doing with the U-235? CIA has not yet learned the identity of the end customer, but CIA is certain that it is not Mr. Kernan. CIA believes the end user customer may be in the Middle East. We are awaiting notification from the Australian Secret Intelligence Service that Robert Alexander has been apprehended. At that point, Agent Ferguson will assume the identity of Robert Alexander and will contact Mr. Kernan to arrange the first delivery of a U-235 sample in person. Gentlemen, when are we expecting this notification? Later today. Correct, sir. Once Agent Ferguson is given the go-ahead from his management, CIA will provide resources to assist in a successful resolution to the problem. Meeting adjourned. Good luck, everyone. Agents Ferguson and Balboni stand and leave the briefing, whilst Agents Damas and Kleinschwanz remain. It is now midday. We see Agent Ferguson and Agent Balboni loading her car with weapons and spy gear at the CIA loading dock. I think we have enough guns now. This is America. You can never have enough guns. Where can we get some lunch around here? The CIA cafeteria. Cafeteria? I was hoping we could have some privacy to discuss some details. I'll check if there's a meeting room available. We can grab something from the cafeteria. How about off-site? My hotel or your place, away from walls with ears. Fine. Not my place. We'll go to your hotel. That way I can drop you off at the same time. They drive off to Agent Ferguson's hotel. This is the end of scene two of Spy Harmony. Join us next time for more scenes from the movie Screenplay. Written by Wolfgang Schuller and registered with the Writers Guild of America, East on December 21st, 2015, under registration number 1284429. This is a work of fiction. Any similarities to persons living or dead or actual events is purely coincidental.